Hello travelers, this is going to be your May 2018 uh, mini cross reading for the earth sign. So this is going to be for Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. Um, and the reason why I'm kind of putting this out a bit early is Uranus is sitting at 29 degrees Aries. Um, if you haven't taken a notice, um, lately of the world climate we've had all of these threats of war skirmishes of war small skirmishes bomb dropping threats people comparing button sizes um and that's typically what uranus and aries can bring that idea of of war um aggression fights anger disputes and then all of a sudden now things have taken a kind of a strange turn um and so once May 15th, once Uranus moves into Taurus, zero Taurus, um, the earth signs are going to have, I mean, it will, everyone will, there will be some kind of effect, but on a global scale, let's look at the chart per se in terms of America. So Taurus is going to rule the American stock market. All right. Uh, Virgo is going to use uh, to uh, be all about the employment and workforce and Capricorn is going to be all about businesses and corporations governments but yet are standing in the world so these three signs together kind of make a trine and so there's going to be some effect uh, Uranus is always that all or nothing kind of an aspect this is quick sudden changes this could be huge losses or it could be huge gains um, and so that's the reason that I want to read on the earth signs first, because, you know, if there's a trigger in one house, I guarantee you it's going to trigger those other two houses, uh, the houses of Virgo and Capricorn, because we have a lot of stuff going on in Capricorn right now. Um, we still have the Mars Pluto conjunction. Uh, a lot of you website members have been posting up your factors and um, I've been trying to answer you as best I could and as fast as I can. Um, keep looking at your charts keep studying those charts keep posting those questions um, you know and study 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 read 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 uh, if you don't understand something you know post it up in uh, underneath one of the, the transit watch or articles astrology articles or you can hit me up uh, or you can even put it if it's not a personal issue just a general question you can post it up in the shout outs and comments that way other people coming to the site can can read it if if they so choose so um we're going to do a quick um mini cross reading i am working on the individual tarots uh for the website for the gallery there um and i'm going to be posting up a full moon reading in the wild card gallery for you guys okay i'll try to get to that sometime this weekend before the full moon because the full moon is going to be in scorpio <clears throat> and we also have Jupiter and Scorpio. So as I was saying, if there's something you've been wishing for or wanting, or there's a big old ask that you've been thinking about asking, the time to do it is when the moon is in, in Scorpio, as long as Jupiter is in Scorpio. Okay. Um, you may not necessarily get exactly what you want and you may not get it exactly when you want it, but what you're doing at the time of the full moon is you are um, ending that place where you've been afraid to make that ask and you're planting some new seeds for this new cycle coming up so you know and all the worst that anybody can say to you is no right then you know <laughs> so um that's that so let's go ahead and lay the cards we have a six of cups a two of pentacles and a two of wands A two of cups. Wow, three twos. A page of wands. And now we have a king of wands. Here is an ace of wands. There's a lot of fire going on. There's our Uranus card. There's the tower. Wow. And then the Ten of Swords, the Gemini, uh, Sun in Gemini. 
and that is the time frame between June 11th so that might give us some kind of timing here June 11th through the 20th now perhaps some of you are dealing with um, the return of a fire sign individual this is going to to um, apply whether this is uh, same sex or heterosexual and whomever is going to take the role of the male now uh, interestingly enough this is really about this particular male okay um, I only have this one major arcana but I have all of these wands cards here so this could also have to do with that idea of that big airy stellium uh, that we have going on but we also know that Fortuna, Ceres, and the North Node are also in Leo, and we do have, as a transit, the North Node in Leo. So there's a lot of fire energy here. Um, some of you, this person can be a foreigner, because if we're going to hit that fire trine, that would include the house of Sagittarius, the sign of Sagittarius, the ninth house. So this could be what this two of cups is all about. Um, someone returning home or wanting to return home uh, maybe taking a trip to visit uh, someone across overseas um, and there's been sort of like this idea of trying to juggle things perhaps maybe in terms of trying to fit in perhaps when you can take the trip or when the person can come um, we see that plans have been laid but I don't think anything's gone forward just yet okay that's what I'm I'm getting and then we have this idea of, of the a two of cups so we see that this is some kind of really there's in the past there was a beautiful energy here um, the six of cups is that card of kindness and nostalgia and memories that feel-good factor safety and security uh, simpler times simpler emotions simpler thoughts things not being so complicated um, within this particular partnership and the answer was that was a yes okay um, and then suddenly we get this two of Pentacles here now this two of Pentacles is also a card about changes it's a duality a choice right and either maybe financially not being able to do whatever it is you need to do maybe it's a time factor maybe it's a distance distance factor but then here's this page of wands uh, this news so to speak that kind of comes in um, now normally when the page of wands shows up this is some kind of exciting news so for some of you this could be a business proposition uh, somebody that you've known from the past maybe it's somebody that you have worked with maybe it's it's you know a childhood buddy or friend or pal maybe even a sibling um, but we see that there's been these this kind of I don't know like back and forth with this particular partnership and then the page of wands comes in and the page of wands is usually some kind of exciting news uh, typically news that that says that things are changing or um, at least things should be changing there are no fives here um, and this news comes to this particular fire king we have this yes this idea of a yes but then out of the blue the tower shows up and I honestly honestly feel that this is speaking to that movement of Uranus into Taurus I'm not just making that up this is this is what is coming across now what is very interesting to me is this ten of swords because this is not the ending of the reading but this tells me that this is the energy the outgoing energy so whatever this tower card represents and we will be taking a look at that with the um, La Vida Sibilas whatever it is it's something that perhaps for some of you you're already dealing with this for others of you you're in the middle of it right now and for the rest of you this is might play out all the way into June okay uh, there is no timing here this was supposed to be a mini cross but for some reason I laid this spread anyway um, I don't know this doesn't read like a legal issue it, it reads like some kind of 
work partnership issue. The Two of Cups is not always about romance, but because of the number of wands here, there's only there's only two cups and one one coins card. So it still kind of feels like there's some kind of work aspect on the back end of this, some kind of employment issue. I'm not exactly sure what this is. But the 10 at the end is a changing energy. So know that right after this, it's going to turn into an ace of swords. Now let's see what's under the deck. Well, here I have a king of cups. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe some of you have been juggling two men's is what? I don't know. <laughs> what do I know? I just read cards. Um, now where's my, put my phone on the charger. Let me, let me take a look at this to see if I can look at these pip cards, these six, the two, the, the two coins, wands and cups and the six, uh, and the 10 of swords next to this tower or some influence over the tower. Because it reads like whatever this thing is, it's like a death blow in some effect, in some way, shape, or form. But also because it's at the end of the reading, it tells me in one respect because the next thing is going to be the Ace of, of Swords that whatever this thing is, these last two cards, it's going to quickly change itself. It's going to bring about some kind of truth or realization for you or whomever. So let me take a look and see what I can, can see here. So the first thing we're going to look at, we're just going to take them in order. We're going to go to the cups and we're going to take a look at the six of cups. And um, to see what, what this is trying to tell us. It tells me nothing. Okay, then let me move to the Two of Cups here. Because it, it reads like a sudden breakup or sudden separation. But something here, the Two of Cups in a reading next tells of adjustments or readjustments needing to be made within a personal relationship. This could be caused by unexpected circumstances and changes or because of stress or extreme, uh, because of stress or pressure caused by waiting for expected news or information. You see, remember I said he's looking at this, so he's waiting. This person is waiting on some news or message to come in. Okay. I so this wand is, I guess, really what the whole thing is about. maybe the person the news that they're waiting on is what they need to hear in order to move forward but perhaps they don't get that news they don't get that news because there's a king of cups sitting here well now let's take a look at this two of coins well isn't that something well isn't that something I'm trying to keep an eye on the clock so Now, it, next to the Ace of Wands, it appears in a spread next to the Ace of Wands. It foretells a favorable employment opportunities. So remember I said underneath this, lying underneath this is some kind of, I don't know, work issue or, or, or self-control issue, something like that. It's, it's just not a straightforward reading. Now, three twos may be warning of an extramarital affair. Uh, the other meaning of three twos, well, that would explain that King of Cups, does it not? Well, well, well. So some of y'all out there have been doing the, been doing the secret stuff. Maybe you're in relationship with this King of Cups, and this is the person that this King is the one that has come in, has returned. Now, three twos speak of a wedding so somebody is not going to get what they want out of this 
okay? And I don't know who that could be. Uh, let's look at the two of coins. This is very interesting to me. I don't know why. Okay, two of coins next to the, I just read that with the ace of wands. So now let's do the two of, two of wands to see if we can come up with something. Um, and then we're going to look at the Ten of Swords, and then we're going to pull some cards, some Sibylas on this. Nothing about the Two of Wands. So now the only other card left to look at is the Ten of Swords. Whatever this thing is, it comes and it is literally like the death blow to somebody. Um, <clears throat> and it could also be that the person is waiting and waiting and waiting and then they don't doesn't say anything and they don't make a move it's a choice all right let's uh, take a look at this because it looks as though everything was going great then something got out of balance and then suddenly boom and both of these figures are looking back this way. So it could also be that idea of somebody not <clears throat> either not making a, a decision. They've just been kind of sitting around rating. Um, this ace, however, says that it's whatever it's whatever it is. It's a real thing. If that makes any sense. It's not something imagined. So if some of you out there have been wondering whether or not, you know, or you've been in a relationship with somebody and it's, whether it's been real or, it's real, all right. But, you know, as always, we have to um, understand that other people have free will. And whatever their free will is to do or not to do is just that, their free will. So it could be very well be one of those situations. Now... I want to look at this. I'm going to look at two cards. I'm going to look at three cards. Two of Pentacles, Ace of Wands, and the Ten of Swords. I'll put it here. La Mica, La Mante, and Fidelta. Well, it, it looks as though someone is either trying to come to grips with or maybe they're trying to balance uh, two relationships here. Uh, maybe the person has already been in a long-term committed marriage. Uh, but then here we have this Lamika, this friend, this person of trust, this confidant. Uh, we have the Lamante, male, um, requited love. And then we have Fidelta, the loyalty. And so I don't know if this is someone trying to determine where do their loyalties lie. Um where their devotion is it really reads like somebody trying to being on the fence about a decision and they don't quite know what to do about it okay um this could be the idea that maybe you have been dealing with somebody who's married or maybe you've been married and maybe if you're married you decided that you're not going to deal with that person anymore you want to try to do the right thing um maybe the other person is married and they're trying to figure out what the right thing is to do. But it, it's a real relationship. Even if one of you are, are married, whomever is the third partner, uh, whatever you have as that third partner with that person, it is it is a real thing. Denari. Finances. Security. La Costanza. The immutability, the unchanging nature of the situation. The mercante. Yes, uh, it's someone is, is, is trying to negotiate or move away or figure out how they can, can handle this situation. What is the best way forward? Well, whatever that tower card represents um, is, is how this is going to play out. So for some of you, you know, depending on what side of the coin you're on on this, this could definitely signal, you know, the end of a relationship, most definitely. The Yardro. The 
Prigioni. And in, in a way, it's two things. It is the absolute understanding that this relationship, no matter what side of the coin you're on, is negatively affected because the person is constrained. They either cannot move or they will not move. Here's love on the back side, but they're not paying any attention to that. The other uh, thing is, is that they also feel at, at some way, shape or form that an opportunity for love has been stolen from them. But the reason why it's been stolen, because this could be somebody who's not even married. This could be about what they went through in the past. Maybe they maybe they're divorced and they had a really horrible breakup. I don't know, you know, divorce. They meet you and they, you know, all the signs are there. They, you know, it, it would be a perfect match, so to speak. It's a real thing. But because they're still holding on to all of that baggage or maybe they're still, you know, dealing with the, the fallout of that bad divorce, they've chosen not to move on this okay they can't they're not in a place to well so let's pull uh, an angel answer card hmm that's interesting well Taurus uh Capricorn and Virgo. I don't know who this King of Cups is out here. That would be a water sign individual. Um, this could also be you. Even if you are a female, that could be you. You know, you got your emotional balance and you know whatever it is you're supposed to be doing. Okay? So don't assume just because it's a male figure that it's, it's absolutely... The spread is about a male for certain. It just says it's up to you. So we see that there is some kind of decision that has to be made and only you're going to be able to figure out whether or not this is going to prevent you from going out there and finding amore okay you can't wait around for somebody to take the wheel and steer your destiny for you you have to steer it for yourself and you are capable of doing that one romance angel card and then we're going to close this down formulate your question for the romance angels Pay attention to the red flags. The signs are cautioning you. Now, that's very interesting because, um, I, you know, I don't know what to make of that. So let's read. It's up to you. And maybe some of you have met somebody and you're like, oh, hell no, something just don't feel right. You know, look, I, I don't know. I just read cards. You know, you'll have to get a personal reading to, if this kind of resonates with you, you'll have to get a personal reading to see what the hell is going on because I don't even know. I'm looking at the wrong book. Hold on. It's up to you. I'm just trying to get through May. <laughs> the end result of the situation you asked about is entirely in your hands. You can affect the outcome by taking a proactive approach to solving any challenges. Stand in your own power and have confidence that you have what it takes to bring about a happy ending. Didn't I just say this, this next thing? Don't wait for someone else to rush in and take charge. In order to come up, in order to come to a successful conclusion, this situation requires your unique perspective and experience. I just said that. Pay attention to the red flags. Well, let's see. The Romance Angel sent you this card to help you notice the unhealthy or disconcerting parts of your relationship. If you are swept up in a new romance, this card serves as a cautionary warning. Pay attention to your feelings and impressions with regard to your new suitor. Don't allow emotion to blind you to characteristics or habits that won't work for you in a relationship. A red flag is a sign that something is off. It can include an indication of dishonesty disrespect, flirtatiousness with others, substance abuse, 
or a lack of integrity. While your new love interest may treat you wonderfully well in the beginning of your relationship, it's vital that you watch how he or she treats others. Someone's basic character is revealed by the way in which he or she talks and acts with restaurant staff, valet parking attendants, and other miscellaneous individuals. If you're in an existing relationship, these flags may signal a need for honest mutual discussion or couples counseling. This card doesn't necessarily guide you to leave a relationship, but red flags can be markers along the path of healing. The romance angels will guide you to take steps that are healthy for everyone involved. So do follow your intuition. And that could be what this King of Cups is all about. So that's what I have for you, Earth Signs, for May 2018. Um, I'll see you on the back side of this uh, a little while uh, before the, um, with the full moon coming up and then Uranus and Taurus. So until next time, namaste.